Hello, we are Team 7. We are here to introduce our final project, Evo Unit Test Prompt Evolution for Language Model-Based Unit Test Generation. Let's get started. These are contents that we are going to discuss today. We will start by talking about our research problem and related work, followed by methods, experiment design, and evaluation. We will also discuss the results of our experiment in detail. And finally, we are going to wrap the presentation up with our limitation and future work. Let's start with our research problem. Several evolutionary algorithms like EvoSuit have been used for unit test generation and have demonstrated decent performance. However, with the rapid development of large language models, certain algorithms like chat unit test use handcrafted prompts with LLM to generate unit tests that show superior performance compared to traditional evolutionary algorithms. Some researchers term these algorithms language model-based unit test generation. However, its performance relies heavily on condition prompt that is usually handcrafted by humans. This results in a significant amount of effort for engineers in designing prompts with no insurance of the prompt optimality. We see this as an opportunity of enhancement Therefore, our goal of this project is to automate the process of prompt optimization using evolutionary algorithms and apply this method to a specific problem in search-based software engineering, unit test generation. Our primary focus will be on generating unit tests for statically typed languages, specifically Java. This is the overview of our research direction. For prompt evolution, we propose an improved prompt evolution method by experimenting on techniques from previous researches, such as GPS and EVO prompt. For the downstream tasks of unit test generation, recent LLM-based unit test generators often receive input in two parts, code context and prompt for text description. We plan to improve the prompt with our prompt evolution method. We also have to design fitness function, which is the metric function to decide which prompt will be reserved or eliminated at each iteration. We will discuss in detail in the following slides. Our work was made on top of the paper Chat Unit Test, which introduces the pipeline for generating unit tests for Java automatically using ChatGPT, exhibiting the Generate Validate Repair Framework. The overview of the pipeline is shown here. At first, each method in the Defect4j projects will go through a pre-processing step to generate the adaptive focal context which contains the focal method itself and its dependency. The context will be generated to not exceed a predefined token limit because of the computational cost of ChatGPT. After that, it will be passed to ChatGPT along with a predefined prompt to generate the unit test. The generated unit tests will be validated whether they contain a syntax error, compile error, or runtime error or not. If the validation fails, it will prompt ChatGPT to fix the code given the error messages. The generated test can go through several rounds of the repair process until it is error-free or until the maximum number of rounds is reached. ChatUnit test already shows a promising result. However, as you can see from the pipeline, it still relies on prompts handcrafted by human. We see this as an opportunity to improve the pipeline by introducing prompt evolution. This is our proposed pipeline, Evolve Unit Test, where we introduce a new component called Evolve Prompt, which is our prompt evolution pipeline. We will do prompt evolution first to find the most appropriate prompt. Then we will run the core chat unit test pipeline using the evolved prompt instead of the handcrafted prompt. We also make some additional modifications in LLM types because of the computational cost issue. To be more specific, we choose CodeLama 7B as our main LLM choice instead of ChatGPT because the cost of API calls will be very expensive in this iterative process. Now, let's dive deeper into our prompt evolution process, which is based on the genetic algorithm. We start with a set of initial prompts. In each iteration, we generate new prompts through crossover and mutation. For each new prompt, we calculate its fitness by evaluating the unit test generated using the prompt. We keep only a fixed size of population based on their fitnesses 
and goes on to the next iteration. After the last iteration, the best prompt in the population will be chosen. In order to calculate the fitness of the prompts, we cannot use the whole defect 4J datasets since it will take too much time. Therefore, we choose a subset of methods from the target project in the defect 4J dataset as our validation set. These methods are chosen from the methods that have at least one correct test case resulted from the re repairing phase when run with the initial chat unit test pipeline. Firstly, we need a pool of initial prompts to evolve on, inspired by prompt generation strategy in GPS paper, where they use a pre-trained language model to generate new prompts. We use ChatGPT to generate 10 variations of original system prompt from chat unit tests as our initial population. We ensure that these 10 variations share similar content while featuring distinct sentence structures and wording. For crossover and mutation, we adopt similar method to our Evo prompt paper. A new candidate prompt is generated through a two-step process based on selected two parents. Firstly, the parents' prompts undergo crossover, resulting in a new prompt that selectively combines components from both parents. Next, the newly generated prompt from the first step undergoes mutation, in which random alterations are made to some of its content. Based on this two-step process, we design instruction guiding GPT model to generate a new prompt. We utilize GPT 3.5 Turbo model from OpenAI API to perform these operations. Here is a demonstration of two parents' prompts and children prompts generated from our pipeline. NLP task usually has a predefined metric to ev evaluate the performance, but in our context of software testing, we do not have such a concrete metric. So we need to design our intuitive fitness function in order to evaluate the quality of each individual system prompt in the population with respect to the test generation quality. Our fitness function is designed as follows. It consists of a percentage of successfully executed tests as well as successfully executed methods. It, we also introduce branch coverage and line coverage to the equation, although these metrics are weighted smaller than the other two. Our target projects consist of four projects from Defect4j, Lang, CSV, JSON, and CLI. These projects were previously chosen in the chat unit test pipeline and we utilize them for performance comp comparison. We ran our baseline of chat unit tests with CodeLama 7B instruct model instead of GPT model. We also compared to both Athena tests and A3 tests, which are the other two language model based tools mentioned in the chat unit test paper. For loading and doing inference with the CodeLama model, the experiments were conducted using a GPU, NVIDIA GeForce, RTX 3090 with 24 G of gram. On the right are some hyperparameters used for our generic algorithm as well as LM model. The reason for choosing only a population size of 10 and five generations and 16 methods to run on is because of limited time and resources. Evaluating each individual system prompt essentially means that we have to run the whole unit test generation pipeline on the development sets to compute the fitness of each individual, which could be quite time consuming and resource demanding. With this setting, the whole process of EvoProm phase alone would take us at least seven to eight hours to run. So now let's take a look at the experiment's result. To evaluate our Evo unit test, we conducted the experiments on four projects from the Defect4j dataset, which is Cly, CSV, JSON, and LAN. For length specifically, we only use the methods from the class number U2. Uh, as you can see in the table, method means that the number of methods for each project that we'll generate the test case for. Since each test case will be uh, generated three times, we, we want to get three test cases for each method, so that explains the attempt column. We also uh, record the number of invalid test cases, compile error and runtime error that we encounter. And finally, the most important metrics is the number of correct test cases. Generally, our EVO unit tests outperform the baseline chart unit tests in terms of correct test cases. 
with the only exception being in the CSV project where we only generate 41 test cases correctly out of uh, 639 attempts compared to 42 correct test cases in the baseline. Secondly, we take a look at the performance of the generated test cases. For this uh, research question, we look at the line coverage and the branch coverage of our generated test cases. Also, again, generally we can see an, in an increase in the performance of our generated test cases compared to the chart unit test baseline, with the only exception in JSON project where we only achieve 28.15 branch coverage compared to 29.78, uh, 87 uh, branch coverage of the baseline. One interesting thing from this table is that we achieved the most substantial improvement in terms of coverage in the CSV project, as you can see here, which is kind of conflict with the first result where CSV is the only project where we experience a decrease in terms of number of correct test cases. This explains that there is a difference between the number of correctly generated test cases and the quality of those generated test cases themselves. And finally, we compare our EVO unit test with some state-of-the-art unit, uh, unit test generation system and chat unit test. So as you can see here, uh, in terms of correct test cases and method coverage, our method, uh, our EVO unit test strongly outperformed the original chat unit test baseline. And also, uh, we have like comparable result with Athena test. But when it comes to A3 test, our uh, EVO unit test falls pretty far behind in terms of correct test cases and focal method coverage. And finally, one, uh, one of the important difference between our findings and the original finding is that in, in contrast to the original result where the chat GPT based repair plays a crucial role which accounts for more than half of the number of correct test cases, we saw that the repair component didn't help much with our EVO unit test where it only accounts for at most one fourth of the number of correct test cases. We hypothesize this as the inability of Code Lama 7B instruct to effectively repair the invalid test cases. So in the original test kit, uh, in the original chat unit test, they actually used ChatGPT, which, which is a large language model with more than 175 billion parameters. And our, our Code Lama 7B instruct our language model only has like 7 billion parameters, so it cannot like as effectively repair the invalid test cases as the uh, chat GPT. And finally, uh, there's of course some limitation uh, with our work that leaves way for future work. The first limitation is the computational resource. So we couldn't find to, um, so we couldn't generate too much uh, computational power for our project since we only were able to use one GPU, which explains for the worst result compared to the figures reported in the original paper. So if we have more computational resources, uh, uh, we can actually try to explore more powerful large language models to push the performance of our method as well as run experiments with larger validation set. The current validation set is actually only 16 methods, so it's kind of like a small set and maybe there's a noise in terms of evaluation with the fitness. We can also conduct the experiments to see the dependency between our algorithm and the current large language model choice. So this is called ablation study. So we wish that we could do that, but due to the limited of computational resource, we couldn't. And secondly, with more time and resource, we could try changing the pipeline to make it able to generate unit tests for different programming languages like Python. So Java is a statically uh, type language compared to Python, which is dynamically type languages. And we figured that there will be more challenge to deal with in dynamically type language like Python. So here's our reference. And thank you for your listening. That is all for our project.